What's going on everybody? I'm back with another video. This video is going to be a tactical preview of tomorrow's game between England and Germany. So we're going to discuss England and their offensive phase against Germany's defensive setup. But before we start, check out my book. It's on Amazon, it's online, and there's links to it in the description below. So be sure to check out that first link in the description and let's get right into the video. So I imagine England's going to match up very similar to how they did in their first and second game. We're going to throw Maguire in for Tyrone Mings and we're going to go with the back four of Reese James, John Stones and Luke Shaw joining Maguire. So then in the midfield we're going to have Declan Rice and Calvin Phillips with Mason Mount playing as the 10 between the lines. Sterling, Kane and Foden seem like the favored front three for England's team so we're going to stick with them for this analysis and I think that there's a lot of variation that England could make in terms of who they go with and I don't think this particular lineup is their strongest 11 but this is the one that they've been going with and this is the one I see them sticking with. So one of the big concepts we'll have to look at when looking at Germany is how England attract their first line of pressure and how they exploit the space between the lines. This isn't something England have been particularly good at and they haven't had continuity going forward. So a lot of times what I mean by this not having continuity is a lot of times they'll go with dual width with Kane as the lone forward and they'll go with dual width on both sides and then they'll try and progress somehow just through individual movements maybe through Rice and Phillips, but then when they would break this first line, they wouldn't have good options further forward to continue this attack. So by having dual width, they would have their fullback stay a little bit and have the front players be more isolated when they did break the line. So what I want to see from England is more dynamic movements to then pin defenders back, create space for Phillips, and maybe advance the fullback. Then Phillips can drop into a wider position as a deep line playmaker, or Declan Rice can do this as he does this very often for West Ham and has done it a little bit for England. But from here with this movement, we have space vacated, which then could be accessed by the England players. So if we have Calvin Phillips get on the ball, Germany would shift. And now the rotation would start for England. So Reese James would hold height, Phil Foden would go between the lines and now we have a little threat from Harry Kane between the lines, a little threat from Harry Kane in behind, or we could go with Harry Kane dropping deeper, trying to get free, and then we have Phil Foden as the threat in behind the defense with trying to push them, the defenders in a deeper line to then free up Reese James to then progress in the wide area. So these are kind of con movements that contain continuity in the sense that the initial progression is followed up, followed up by concepts and movements of other players to continue the progression into the next third of the field. One thing I would also like to see more of from England is utilizing the central three corridors in their buildup. Now they don't have to do this every time, but with Reese James playing a similar role for Chelsea in a few games towards the end of their season, we could see Reese James moving into a more central position, creating a back three. Now what this will do is it will be a better trigger for Germany to then go and press. So England will have the advantage of attracting pressure from Germany, which would then create more space for their holding midfielder or their holding midfielders if Calvin Phillips drops. So with with these two players, we have a very secure 3-2 buildup. And then now we can play in the blind spot of the defenders. And then we can have Phil Foden in a more vacated space out wide to then give us progression. But with this, we need to then consider the use of Luke Shaw and Sterling. So with Raheem Sterling, we can have a player who will run in behind, so staying a little bit more narrow, and then Mason Mount would switch over to this half space. So we would have influence in both half space with Sterling being more of a threat in behind, creating space for Luke Shaw in the wide area, or the direct ball in behind to Sterling, running in behind, 
And what this would do on this weak side, the three man back line and the structural change would really suit Harry Kane and Raheem Sterling to kind of get them more in a, more on the same page. So now we can create the free man through pinning. Harry Kane can drop in into the half space like he does for Tottenham. And then from here, he'll have Raheem Sterling running in behind and Mason Mount joining the attack. So then from here, even, even going a little further, we can have Calvin Phillips jump or Phil Foden occupy the half space when this progression happens. And then our defensive shape can stagger a little bit and we can fill in the rest defense with a four man rest defense to then try and secure things for Germany. But the crucial thing is getting Harry Kane on the ball in comfortable situations like he would be for Tottenham Hotspurs. And although I wouldn't go with Sterling, personally I wouldn't start him, but if he is going to start, they have to play him in his strengths and use his assets as a player to then help the team. So then this might even mean limiting his role on the ball between the lines and more using him to create space for others or using him and his pace in dangerous areas. Then from here we can have players like Mason Mount, Phil Foden get on the ball in dangerous areas between the lines and move off of Harry Kane when he drops in here giving him options to continue progression. And then the big important thing is using these three central areas in advanced areas in advanced spaces to create numerical superiority against the two holding midfielders of Germany because what this will do is it'll elicit a response from the defense to accommodate this three-man occupation of their defensive midfield line so oftentimes the central defender will jump which is then the moment which is then the moment when space is created in behind and Germany can get exposed. So here was just a few tactical tweaks and a few adjustments that England can do with the lineup they've been going with. I know I have Reese James here, not Kyle Walker, but either or, they play very similar roles. Just wanted to provide a little tactical breakdown on what I think England can do a little bit differently without changing too much from where they're at right now so these are a few changes i think they can make and how they could really control the game against germany in their offensive fate so if you haven't already please like and subscribe to the channel and i'll see you in the next one